It's always nice to get a complimentary introduction from Gerard Butler. <laughs> no one can fulfill their potential. <laughs> wow, way to drop a bombshell, Mr. Positivity. However, everybody can try to fulfill their potential. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to ask you all to imagine fulfilling your potential. We've all got something unique to offer, every one of us different. My name is Jim Eastwood, and I'm going to tell you five things about me, and then I'm going to do something a little bit different. Are you up for that? Good. So the five things about me quick are, I'm a family man, I'm a sportsman, I'm a learner, I'm an earner, and I'm a communicator. And quickly racing through those, family man, married, two kids, great family upbringing, not privileged, but loving, and I'm very grateful for that. A sportsman, a keen athlete, and an ex-athlete, and competitive in all the sports I participated in. I'm now an adventure athlete. What does that mean? Well, I like to cycle. I like to cycle pretty far. Check out the Paris-Roubaix challenge I'm doing next week. I'm a learner. I was on the conveyor belt of education. Many of us were. I did the GCSEs and the A-levels and the degree, and then the Masters in Business Administration, the MBA and in the States. I've been a leader for tomorrow in Harvard University. I always try and sharpen the saw, read the books, glean more information, and soak up any tidbit that is going to help me improve or, or get better. I'm an educationalist as was mentioned earlier, and I'm an ambassador for Young Enterprise Northern Ireland as their enterprise ambassador and champion. But the final point is of the five, I'm a communicator. Don't know if I'm a good one. People might say, that guy likes to talk a lot. But I do like to talk. And last night prior to this talk, when I was telling my wife what I was going to speak about today, she said, you know, you're also pretty creative. You're a pretty good writer. And I said, well, thanks very much, darling. And she said, on occasion, on the rare occasion, you've even written a poem. And I said, okay, the night before the TEDx gig, you're going to try and make me write a poem. So late last night, I constructed a poem. So if you don't mind, and if you will, I think it's the best way for me to communicate and articulate how I would like you to think about imagining if you fulfilled your potential. Does that sound okay? So normally I do things off the cuff but I've got the paper and the scribblings from the night before, and it's called Imagine Fulfilling Your Potential. Is the glass half full or about to overspill? Our potential is limitless. Is it possible to fulfill? Potential is a strange thing, intangible and unique to all masquerading as talent and skill, how we use it, now that's our call. But it's not confined to the few. I say, fulfill it or die trying. It is impossible to do that. I hear the pessimists sighing. A waste of God-given gifts replaced by life and stuff and bills. When I imagine fulfilling my potential, it literally gives me chills. I am excited by the prospect, driven by the need to know that my efforts are not in vain, that I give this life a go. High achievers and daydreamers, risk takers and those who bend the rules, anyone who puts themselves out there at home or in work and in schools, I challenge you to consider two futures, one with, one without potential. Let's all ask ourselves right now, do we genuinely believe it's essential? I think it's the reason we're here, to help others and ourselves reach high. Keep doing more of what you're best at, and try. Why not? Just try. As I scribbled this down last night, thinking, goodness, how can I be more influential? 
Well, I ask you to do one thing. Look for ways to fulfill your potential. Who am I to prescribe or advise? Why should you listen to that guy, Jedi Jim? It's me. I myself struggle and stagnate on occasion, but I take a chance and I go out in a limb. Butcher, baker, or candlestick maker, whatever you want to showcase, be, or do, there will always be external factors, but it ultimately comes down to you. What do you want to achieve? What legacy do you wish to leave behind? If a stranger stumbled upon your life, what brilliance would that guy find? I'm not talking about the material things that are often prioritized most these days. I'm talking about being the best that you can be in a wide variety of ways. We will never fulfill our potential. That's the beauty and the challenge we all face. Prioritize what's important. Give love, give more, and keep pace. My fear is to be sat on a bar stool. That's most people's ambition. Cursing what could have been and now has passed. It's, not, it's the taking part that counts. It's not about finishing first or indeed last. Use your time and your potential wisely. Don't piss it down the drain and lose. Like the serenity prayer advises, may we each know what to accept, what to change, and what to choose. Help others to fulfill their potential. In life, family, in society, use this verse. Imagine the immense satisfaction Imagine that parallel universe. I'm a salesman, and I hope that I've sold it, but there's no money-back guarantee. We all have the potential within us. The best things in life are free. Thank you very much. Tim, thank you very much. Brilliant, um, Jim Eastwood, businessman and poet. Uh, in fact, we've asked Seamus Heaney to come and critique the poem for us. Seamus? Uh, uh, no, he's gone, okay. A Couple of questions to, to Jim. Um, one that, that occurs to me, because working in business and also in education and motivational work, what is it you find particularly amongst young people here that represents kind of the block for them to moving towards their fuller potential? Okay, I'm gonna spin that. I don't see the block, and I don't think they see the block. Um, kids are so imaginative and creative and passionate, and they're ingenious. When I was their age, when I go into schools and I speak to, to pupils, and there's 100,000 plus students who embark upon young enterprise every year, they blow me away. You'll have experiences in your homes, nieces, nephews, kids, and children of all ages. There is no block. Um, I think the future is in good hands for the generations coming behind us. We just have to make sure that we pave the way as best we can in the meantime. Any questions, comments? Do you have Alan Sugar's number on your speed dial? I do. I don't ring him at 3 o'clock in the morning, Excellent. though. Excellent. Try not to. That wouldn't be good. Anyone over here? This side of the room has been more active. I'm going to look at you for a bit and shame you. Question about motivation, potential. Anyone over here? They'll be tweeting them. All right, we'll go back over there. It's 10 nil at this point. Yeah, Wake up. That was a, go ahead. a fantastic poem. Thanks very much. Um, we, uh, myself and John Lennon here, my name is Patrick Makaliski. We run a, a local IT company called Novasco. And one thing that we find is that sometimes we find hard is developing salespeople. It's something yeah. that when I go out like yourself and speak to school children and say, hands up, who wants to be a salesperson? Right. And they'll look at you like you're an alien that, you know, that's not a trade, that's not something that you want to do when you grow up. It's not valued. What, what's the, you know, what, what is the, you know, what's the magic? What's the thing that you would say to convince a kid to do that? Or what do you think, say, yeah. are the top three tips for being a fantastic salesperson? Okay, good question. Um, <laughs> so, probably right up until that TV show, um, <laughs> I, I didn't consider myself a salesperson. 
Um, I actually would never have wanted to be referred to as a salesperson, whatever the stigma <coughs> is, the guy who knocks on your door and opens his jacket and tries to sell you something. Yeah. Um, the tips that I often give people are, are, are quite broad, um, but really poignant. Self-belief is really important. And I think some people shy away from believing in themselves because they perceive it as being arrogant. Okay? So nobody wants to be perceived as being arrogant, so I'll be humble, I'll be modest, and I'll be in the background. Have a bit of self-belief, chest out, chin up. Second thing that I, I say as well is, is be positive and persistent. You know, and when I say be persistent, because we can all be positive, but I'm not saying whoop de doo just got hit by a bus, ain't life great? That's called being silly. But being positive is having a good attitude towards things, looking for opportunities and things, and in sales, you know, being persistent, because I've had lots more no's than I've had yeses. My wife will testify to that. <laughs> um, and the third thing I say, and I don't know for what it's worth, guys, who am I to prescribe, but be yourself. We can sense uh, fake, disingenuous, uh, a mile away. Our radar is very sensitive to it. Be yourself. And that's what people warm to. And whether you brand yourself a salesperson, an IT guru, or whatever it is, um, as long as you're doing some of those things, I think you can hold your head up high and, and give it your best shot. Although you're up against a big psychological problem, aren't you? Because if you're the salesperson and I'm your target, I, I, I know you're trying to manipulate me or to persuade me to buy something or to do something. And it, it's, it's very difficult for me to say, well, he's just being himself and authentic. He, he wants the gig. He wants to make the sale. That's who you are at that moment, isn't it? Well, it is, but not to get too textbook, but I have to establish if you have a need and if I can... Oh, I have many needs. Oh. <laughs> Jared Butler. Not many of which we can talk about in public, but yes. But in, in that scenario, you know, there's, there's a difference in sales, isn't there? You know, I still am a very… Lord Sugar said I was the best salesperson he'd ever seen, the best in the world. He gave me a certificate. My wife framed it at Christmas. I've got it. But what does that mean? You know, I, I don't know. It's not something I put in my CV, but salespeople can mm. sell you the dream, love you and leave you, or they can build rapport, build relationships, and build trust with integrity and dignity and all the things that we've discussed and heard about today. And, and they're diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. So um, don't tar us all with the same brush. <laughs> Where do you keep the certificate? Um, it's in my office at home. And I, I do, I, I reluctantly uh, put it up, but I do look at it. I'm proud of that. It's yeah. a very proud, uh, positive part of my life. Do you have an ego wall? Sorry? All the, all the awards. No, I, I don't have Americans an ego wall. It, it ego actually wall, isn't yeah. even hung up. It's sitting oh, in the corner of my desk. You're too modest. You're much too modest. One final question. There we are. Um, thank you. My name is Michelle. I work for Aware Defeat Depression. And you sing um, in the choir. And I do, yes. And you did brilliantly earlier. I'm double jobbing today. Well done, no yeah. better place for it. <laughs> My question for Jim, um, I would like to take it maybe away from the business side of things and focus on your motivational talk. Someone suffering from depression lacks an awful lot of confidence and an awful lot of motivation. What advice would you give to people that are in situations like that? What would you tell them? You know, you're standing here today, you've definitely motivated me and I'm feeling very inspired, um, certainly after your poem, but how would you go with dealing with someone like that? Thanks for the question, Michelle, and, and great work with it, and a really, um, I'm not going to say neglected, but there's a stigma with depression, isn't it? Isn't there? Um, people don't often like to talk about it or refer to anybody sure. having it or have had it. So I don't know enough about depression, but I'm a big believer in about your attitude. So if depression is linked a lot of the time to maybe your, your mental state, whether it's environmental factors or chemical imbalances within, um, I know someone who's recently came out of depression, and they're one of the strongest people mm. that I know, and they, <clears throat> they face quite immense adversity at the moment, and they're a pillar for uh, the other people in their life that need them, and they're a survivor of depression, 
Um, so there's no stigma. I, I, I don't feel comfortable prescribing something per se. I, I respect what you do, and I think we should become more tolerant and aware yeah. of uh, that, that uh, affliction. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's thank Jamie Spood. Brilliant. Thank you, Jim. It's okay.